this, 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 this is a mark. This, this, this is a mark. This is a mark. Any unauthorized use of this mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. Any unauthorized use of this mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the lab. It's your boy Elbow. Uh, this is part uh, three of the basic tutorial on reasons uh, 4.0. Uh, on this tutorial, I'm going to continue talking about uh, adding sounds, but this time we're going to add uh, a drum kit and then we're going to record the drum kit. Take that sound that you added to the rack and record it in the sequencer. Uh, I've already did a preload of uh, of a sound, so if you don't know how to add a sound, you could always go back to the, the previous tutorials, and uh, I show you on there how to add a sound. So we're not going to go through that for the sake of not making this video uh, super long. Okay, let's get started. Okay, what I did is I went in and I went and I added a drum kit. Uh, the drum kit is called Redrum. Uh, Redrum is uh, is a nice uh, drum, uh, let's just say emulator, because you could actually you have you actually have tracks like one through ten where you could actually add individual uh, drum kit sounds onto this this one module, and then you could put all those sounds onto your mixer when you record. I've already uh, taken care of that, but I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Uh, the way you do that is you go into your redrum as you can see here we have one through ten uh, right here I have a kick that's on track one on track two or I think it's three I loaded a snare and on track five I loaded a cymbal now this is just as easy as going here and clicking on the browse sample and then you can go in and you can find individual tracks to put in just that one track on a redrum and you also can click up here on the search and go into exclusive drum sorted and you can find everything you need as far as drum snares uh, rim shots uh, claps hi-hat cymbals so forth and so on but since we already got it preloaded we're not going to do that I'm just trying to show you that you can actually go to each individual track on your redrum and add anything you want toms anything like that for this tutorial I just added three sounds kick snare and cymbal alright alright as you can see when you load this sound up uh, from the start when you just go into create create an instrument and you load the redrum everything is on one track on your mixer so everything that I would be playing would be just on this one track actually what I did is I went in and I went through and if you remember in the other tutorial if you go to options and then you go to toggle rack front rear uh, you can actually put individual tracks uh, you can designate where you want your tracks to go on as far as this sound module as you can see when I flipped it over you can see the 1 through 10 on the redrum and you could also see the 1 through 14 on my mixer well, all you have to do is you just click on the track that you want and then you just um, I don't know what happened there but you click on the track you want and then you just designate it to whatever track uh, you like I'm doing six on the redrum I want to put that on four on my mixer and then whatever sound that you have on your sixth track on your redrum will play on your fourth track on the fourth track on your mixer uh, it's great it's just like working in a real studio but just without getting on your knees and going under the desk which is great for me because I'm not going to do all that shit anyway. Excuse my French. But let's flip back over and see what we got. All right. So I don't have anything on six. And if I do, I'm not going to play it. looks like it's a snare of some sort. But all right. Now I'm just going to work with what I loaded up. And as you can see, they're all on their own track. All right. Let's go down to, let's go down to the sequencer. All right. I've already recorded uh, a track but what we're going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to delete that. So delete the to delete that, all you have to do is click on that and push delete on your keyboard. Or you can go up here to edit and then just push delete. And it's gone. But what I want to talk about is I want to talk about your uh, the left and the right. Uh, I guess I would call them flags. That's kind of what they look like. Uh, these are uh, 
right here this is what you use a loop so let's say if you want the loop to go eight bars you put it here on eight bars you go down here and you click on loop on your transport uh, transport is what you use for us you know play record and stuff like that how many bars you want it time code and stuff like that but um, if you want it to go eight bars you use this as your indicator for your loop uh, and right now I just want it to be four bars so I'm gonna put it here on four bars and make sure I got that set on bars I'll talk about that a little bit I just kinda clicked over there and he's like what the hell is he doing he went way over there but anyway uh, I'm gonna put it on four bars and um, and we're gonna just you know bang out a track uh, right here is your click if you want to have a click to follow you whenever you push play so you can have so you can keep your time timing together and the pre is for a preload or a pre countdown uh, and you can that is indicated with one bar and you can actually go in and set it up for more than that but I don't see any reason why anyone would need more than one bar for a countdown uh, to let you know when it's time for you to start recording all right remember push your loop make sure you start from the beginning of the track or from the beginning of the song or from the beginning of the loop however you want to word it and then push record and you're gonna get a countdown alright just something simple alright now uh, since I am recording and uh, I got this program running plus a recording program uh, it's a little off so what I'm gonna do is uh, which is very easy is a great thing about reason and if you did any producing in the past you would know that quantize is always a great tool for you to kind of line up all of your notes if you're you're not on time and uh, there's a lot of producers out there that are, that are you know they have a problem with being on time some producers like it some producers want their stuff to be a little bit off uh, sort of sound more natural uh, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna go right up into this bar that's what I clicked on uh, previous and I know I was kidding around but I said I was gonna come back to it uh, this is what you use for your quantize you can click on that and you can go you know 1A, 116, 116T, 132 so forth and so on I'm gonna go 116 and, um, and then we're gonna go up to edit and then on edit we're going to go to quantize notes at 116 and then we're going to play it we're going to turn off the click because I don't need that to follow anymore and we go okay alright now that's still a little off which is okay because you know I could always go in and I can look at it look at it from a, a I can go deeper into this quantize field if I want I can go to the edit screen which is up here at the top where it has like the two little windows if you right let me left click on that and then left click on the uh, track that we just dropped it'll bring me into this view this is the edit view you can actually see every note that I kick these are all the kicks and these are the snares now if I look real close I can kinda get some type of indicator of what what you know if I was off or if I did something that didn't make any damn sense kinda like this right here where I got both of those kicks kinda back to back I can just go in there and delete one of them go up to edit go to delete bam that's gone now let's play it in here Now, I'm sitting up here listening to that, and I'm like, man, that really sounds like crap. But uh, trust me, you know what I'm saying? If I take a little bit more time up with it, I can fix it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to get all deep into it because I'm actually just trying to show you uh, how you could uh, actually take a track from the, the rack uh, and put it into the sequencer and sequence the track and have it loop at four bars. Uh, and then we just close this out, and this will bring us back to the main uh, window for as reasons go. But... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, how to take a sound. I use the drums because I wanted to get just a little bit in detail on the drums because the drums are a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't say complicated, but it's a lot more work when, uh, whenever you're taking the drums and you're putting them into a sequencer. You actually can do more things with just than just dropping a sound in there and then recording it into the, the uh, sequencer. You actually have more options when you're uh, looking at uh, read drum. Uh, all right, uh, check out uh, tutorial number four. 
uh, and I'm gonna get a little bit more in detail. I'm gonna try to uh, add some more sounds, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how you can have the sequencer. You can have more sounds in the sequencer. And you can start putting them together and, and mixing and doing some different things. With it. So uh, uh, check out the story for This is a morphous. This is a morphous. Any unauthorized use.